In order to speak about the OPEC news agency, uh, we must go back to the days when OPEC was founded. And that means going back to September 1960 in Baghdad. OPEC was founded by a group of five oil exporting countries, Kuwait, Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, and Venezuela, in order to have a common front against the seven major oil companies, so-called at that time, the Seven Sisters, who were virtually controlling the oil market in all its phases, and were actually dictating which countries, from which countries they would take the oil and what they would pay for it. Therefore, OPEC was a triumph of the developing world, a triumph of the developing countries, in the sense that it was the first organization that succeeded in confronting the, the, the powers of the industrialized countries and managed to impose its will. In 19, between 1960 and 1973, OPEC struggled along trying to impose better conditions for the oil that it sold to the oil companies, trying to get better prices, a bigger share of the revenue through taxation and other means. It was not taken seriously. It was actually ignored. Most of the oil companies refused even to acknowledge its existence. The government of the Republic of Switzerland, of the canton of Geneva, where OPEC had its headquarters in the beginning, refused to grant it diplomatic recognition, and therefore OPEC moved to Vienna. So the first 13 years were of a long and arduous struggle. In between the summer and the end of 1973, however, OPEC managed to take control of the market, which has not relinquished since, and in a few months managed to impose an increase in prices from $2 to somewhere in the area of 12 thereby multiplying by three the cost of energy to the industrialized countries. This caused a reaction which is uh, still felt in that the major powers such as the United States and the United Kingdom and Britain, uh, I mean and Germany and France and so on, uh, tried to destroy OPEC by attacking it through the media that they very elegantly control through the TV and the magazines and the radio and the news agencies. And this uh, campaign of, let's say, of, of putting the blame on OPEC for all the problems of the economies of the industrialized countries is still continuing, although, of course, by now it has decreased considerably. But in 1973, between 1973 and 1979, this was quite, quite a strong and, con and consistent campaign. Now, in 1979, there was a meeting of, in, in, uh, I think, in, in, the, uh, in Hawaii, or in, no, in the Philippine Islands, there was a meeting of uh, developing countries. And uh, for the first time, some criticisms were uh, leveled at OPEC because by then the price had increased again three times to the area of $36 per barrel. And the developing countries were beginning to feel a tremendous suffering because they had to pay costs which were they unable to finance. When OPEC realized that the developing countries were beginning to turn against it, in other words, OPEC found itself being berated by the industrialized countries and also criticized by its natural brothers in the developing countries, it became very alarmed. And in the conferences of OPEC of 1979, 
the conference asked the Secretariat to deal with this problem in a constructive manner. It was decided that the story of the ongoing problem of oil had to be told from three sides. It had to be told from the sides of the consumers, represented of course by the governments of the industrialized countries, by the side of the processors, were told by the oil companies, and then by the side of the producers, which was, which was the side of OPEC. In this process, OPEC had been very silent. By its very nature, our countries had very primitive communication facilities. It was very difficult for a journalist, even if he was impartial and wanted to give the three sides of the story, to get the OPEC side. OPEC had a Department of Information, but it was not very efficient. It was not really oriented <clears throat> towards the outside. In fact, it, was, it had been created in order to gather information for the inside of the organization. In other words, in, in between 1973 and 79, OPEC had no public relations whatsoever. And uh, this, of course, made it very easy for those who wanted to attack OPEC and made it very hard for those who wanted to be fair to give a balanced story. The conference decided, therefore, in 1979 that the thing to do was, would be to uh, have a news agency of its own, something which in itself was a revolutionary decision <clears throat> because, as you know, news agencies are most, by and large, either belonging to governments or to belonging to uh, newspapers, such as, for example, uh, the, the Associated Press, which is a conglomerate of newspaper owners, or Reuters, which is a commercial enterprise, or France Press, etc. In the, in the developing countries, the practice most of the time is to have a national news agency which is controlled by the government, by the Ministry of Information of each country. Therefore, the Secretariat found itself facing a very difficult challenge. Uh, it, it, its specialty was most of, uh, mostly to deal with oil and the marketing of oil and so on. It knew nothing about public relations, let alone about press and about news agency business. And it was so expressed at the time by the Deputy Secretary General, Dr. Fadil al Chalabi, who requested the help of the members of OPEC, which by that time had grown to 13, and therefore a number of, of um, qualified staff from various member countries came to Vienna in 1980 on secondment basis. They came for a few months and worked in a committee organizing the agency. Uh, the technical aspects, for example, the, the transmission uh, problems were dealt with by a gentleman from Iraq who had done this work for the Iraqi news agency. The uh, network of distribution to deal with the distribution of the news outside, to, to reach the newspapers and the television stations that we were interested in, were set up by the president of the news agency of the United Arab Emirates, uh, the agency WAM. And then journalists came from Venezuela and from Ecuador and from Nigeria. The uh, challenge that OPECNA faced at that time was really colossal. First of all, it is to be understood that a national news agency is not taken very seriously by the newspapers of the world because it is known to be biased. It is known to carry a propaganda message. So the first thing OPEGNA had to do was to be absolutely objective in its presentation of the facts, and therefore to have a style that corresponded to the style generally accepted in the world as that of an international news agency. 
So that was the first challenge. The second challenge was to uh, manage to convince the editors of the most important media, the New York Times, Le Figaro, uh, the Times of London, that it was worthwhile for them to read, to receive and to read these this reports emanating from Vienna. And I am sure we succeeded in that job only because OPEC at that time was so important that they couldn't afford to ignore it. However, once the door had been opened, we succeeded because the style that OPECNA adopted was a professional style. It looked uh, just like any other report, and still does, I'm glad to say, like any other news agency material. It did not talk about excellencies referring to ministers, for example, which would have been fatal. It simply gives the news in the approved international style. The decision uh, was uh, uh, taken <coughs> to inaugurate the agency <coughs> on the occasion of the 20th anniversary, which was on the 16th of September of 1980. And it so came to pass. We started with uh, journalists from Venezuela, from Ecuador, from Iraq, and from Nigeria. And we had also uh, two or three from the United Kingdom and from the United States because, of course, we had adopted the working language of the organization, which is English. And therefore, we needed English-speaking journalists to help us develop proper English usage. It needless to say that it would have been fatal if our English had not been absolutely correct from the beginning. The, ne the network was set up uh, using uh, a spare time, free time, of, of a number of internationally recognized uh, carriers, uh, news carriers. We used Reuters and United Press International, an IPS in Rome, and we also had uh, a few direct subscribers that we sent things by telex. I must emphasize that the great success of the news agency was to have been received by the media as just another channel of communication that brought news about oil. That is the most important achievement because in the world of news, the news from the developing world are never taken seriously. And OPEGNA was in 1980 taken seriously, and it is still taken seriously. I can assure you that on my Reuters monitor, I see news from OPEGNA at least five times a week. And this is an achievement that no other news agency from any other country or group of organizations has managed to reach. Therefore, I must conclude these words by uh, not only thanking the management of the seminar for inviting me to give you this brief, brief address, but also by congratulating the Secretariat for having maintained the standards of the OPECNA throughout all these years and having uh, systematically supported the work of the agency. And I hope that this seminar, which I understand will deal with uh, technical matters as well as with uh, some of the history that is necessary for understanding OPEC will enlighten you and help you to do your job better. Thank you very much.